artistic approach to um, talk about our artistic approach to um, showing a face. And we're going to start by showing straight up. Not in an angle, not profile, not up or down, just straight up for the sake of simplicity. We're going to start with that. And our next two sessions, we're going to um, get to more, um, uh, uh, more complex um, elements of the portrait. So the first thing that I want you to think about, and really a lot about my work as an artist, is uh, uh, um, when I try to capture reality, because I also do abstract, and, and let's just separate those two, those two things. Our work today is to focus on reality and to capture reality in a way that we see, that we, that we observe it. Um, I believe that every artist has a language has a voice has their own style and and i want you all to finish this class or finish the set our three sessions or in the future to get to that voice i'm also working on my voice um but remember that when we learn at the, at the stage that we're just trying to kind of understand what the human face looks like and how to capture it we're going with rules we're going with rules and we're going to learn those rules and then you're going to go ahead and break those rules. Right now, we're going to try to be very, you know, good students. So the very first thing about a face is to understand its general shape. We're starting, whenever I start in our work, I start from the big picture and then go to the details. So when I draw a face, let's say I draw this face right now, I'm not going to start with the eye or the lips. I'm going to start with the general, the largest, form that I see. And the largest form that I see from this angle is sort of an egg shape. All right, a little bit of an egg shape. So I'm going to do a little bit of an egg shape here because you'll be surprised when you never draw an egg, it's a little bit harder to draw it than you think. But let's do this. First, let's just draw, all of you I'm assuming have pencil or paper or something to write with. I hope so. And if you don't, you could take a moment and go grab something. It doesn't need to be the highest end art supplies. It could just, today we're just kind of learning concepts and then later you could do a beautiful final artwork. Right now, just anything you could just sketch with. So just to warm up, do this. Do a square, do a perfect square. As perfect as you can, just, you know, more or less. In that square, put a circle. It's easier to put a circle in a square because you can just look at a quarter of it and just do a quarter each time. A quarter, a quarter, a quarter, and a quarter. And that helps you draw more or less a pretty good circle. It's easier to draw that than without the square. So now you got warmed up a little bit with shapes. Now we're gonna take that circles and we're gonna elongate it. I'm gonna draw a rectangle now, and I'm gonna draw half a circle and another half a circle. And now I got myself more or less kind of square, but a sort of an egg. And now I can take that egg and refine it. So if I think about a face, I know that, I'm sorry, now that I know, I observe. I look in the mirror, because you know, these days it's, it's a little bit harder to get a model and to be with other people. So let's say you work from home and you want to experiment drawing face. The best thing I could give you to do is to just look in a mirror, put a mirror in front, in front of your face, put a pocket mirror anywhere, set it up so you can look at your own face and analyze your own face. That would be an amazing beginning if you never drew a face in your life. So here I am looking at my own face in a mirror and observing its general shape. So yes, I got the idea that it's an egg, more or less an egg, but let's refine it. That egg, the upper part of it, the part where it's a skull is kind of rounded. And then the lower part has more shape. It's a little bit more pointy because I have the chin here. And everyone, we all, we all are obviously, every human being has their own unique facial features. What I'm going to be drawing today is kind of very generic look just to get the, the rules out of the way to understand those rules. All right, so I know the top part is kind of rounded. Okay, 
then you know I'm gonna actually make it a little bit narrower. I like the egg to be a little bit narrower. And then the, 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 the bottom part of the egg is gonna be a little bit more pointy. Just like that, doesn't that need to be perfect. I'm just trying to get the idea of an egg sitting upside down. So now that's starting to look a little bit more like a, 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 a human face. If I take that face and I rotate it, which we're not gonna actually do any uh, other angle today, but we do wanna understand what we're doing. What I'm actually doing is imagine that you have a balloon, okay? This is a balloon. And then I take a mask, you know, a mask that has eyes and I tie that mask on the balloon. So that's what I have. I have the mask of the face and I have the balloon. So when I draw a face, this is kind of the shape that I have in mind. This is from the side, okay? This is the person. This is from the side. So when I look at it from the front, I have the mask of the face. Imagine that this would be like a line here. And I only see the top of the skull, the rounded part here. And this would be perhaps the hair, it would be the hairline. We'll get to that. Okay, so we got a little bit of an egg. Now I wanna look at this artwork. This is an artwork by uh, Hans Holbein. Okay, I just printed it out just so we can look at it together and just notice that, notice what we have. So I have the egg shape. We don't see the actual top of it, but let's say it would end around here. The egg shape, this is the mask of the face. Notice the curvature of, the, of the, the bottom part. It's so, it's so, every line in the body, and this is, you know, it's not only face, it's also the, the human form. Whenever you draw the human form, every part of your body, every line that you have is, has its own special curve. Nothing, there's no straight lines in our body anywhere. There's no straight lines. There's no um, sharp uh, corners. Everything is organic. Everything, we're like water. We're made, we're made out of water. We're organic, we flow. We have a life within us. So it's something that comes to life when you, when you especially when, you know, if I draw figurative and I draw movement, there is always something that is organic, that is soft, that is kind of flowing like a river. And the same approach is when I, when I draw face, whenever I draw lines, even lines that appear to be straight, they will always have a little bit of a curvature, a little bit of a shape. It's just something to notice and to think about while you work, while you work. And you could see that, 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 that special, that unique line work, you can see that here so clearly, it's just beautiful. Okay, so that was a little bit of a side note, going back to the face. Okay, so we have the egg. I'm going to draw uh, something a little bit larger here. I'm going to draw that, you know, I'm just going to move, just use that as a reference. All right, so let's say I have this face here. I'm not going to do all the beautiful detail of the bone structure, but just to get the general idea of the face looking at us. All right, just an egg. Now, we have two types of measurements or two types of kind of formulas that I want you to have in mind. The very first and the most important, or the, let's just keep it the first one. The first one is the fact that our eyes are placed in the middle of our skull. They're not placed towards the top. You know, many times you draw faces, you know, you put the eyes here, but that's not true. The eyes are placed in the middle of our face. So if we measure, if we take this measurement and we cut it halfway, that's where the eyes are sitting. So I'm gonna take this measurement and take about this mark about this where around where the center is and it would be right here. That's where the eyes will be placed. That's where, where I will locate them, but I will wait with the actual uh, drawing of them for the next step. Okay, 
So that, what I want you all to have is that written down. This is one half and this is one half. Half and half, eyes, forehead, mouth down here. And you can see it in any artwork, you could just stay here. This is a, a drawing that I did, copied another artwork, but I'm showing here how if you take the face, you, the face, you measure it, you fold it in a half, that's where their eyes are seated. You look in the mirror, you measure yourself from here, not from the hairline, from the top of the skull down to the bottom of the chin, halfway down, 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 uh, eye line. Okay? So that's measurement one. The second measurement, and I'm gonna take a different color so it's easier to see the difference. The next part is for the mask of the face. So I was talking about the mask of the face here, the mask of the face here. Let's, let's decide that our hair comes down how much? We, we'll, we'll, each one of you, when you look at your own, even in the, in, in the Zoom, when you look in the, um, the camera, you can see where your hair starts. How much of your skull is being covered by your hair? Now your hair may be um, um, maybe, maybe puffy and go up to here, you know, so you don't even see the top of your skull. But if you push your hair backwards and you look straight up, not like this and not like that, just you look as straight as you can, it will give you a sort of a, a certain measurement. And you can take an, you take an approximate measurement and I will take around that much. Okay, I will be like, okay, this is my hairline. Okay, more or less. Now I'm taking this. I marked what I did here. I marked the top of my hair, of my face mask. This is what I'm marking right now. So this is the top part. And then the bottom part is the bottom of the chin, right? So now I'm gonna take my, my face measurement or my face area that I just marked here. And I'm going to divide it to three. Just by eye, it doesn't need to be precise, like, you know, perfectly. It's really just to get the idea down. I divided it by three. This is first third. And this is the second third. Okay. The first third, let me make, let me have a line here. Let me make a line here. If you have that, you're, you will be able to place your features of the face very easily because you just gave yourself a, a, a whole, just kind of gave yourself a, 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 the way to, to get to every point very easily. Now it's precise and I'll show you what I mean. This line, the top, the, the top, the first third mark is the eyebrow line. And when I say eyebrow line, I mean where the eyebrow, um, the bottom of the eyebrows. The eyebrows are many times would uh, arch up a little bit. Sometimes they would be straight, sometimes they would slope down a little bit, but let's, let's I'm, I'm looking at my face as a reference right now for this um, uh, demo, for example, and my eyebrows are uh, arched up a little bit and then they go down, right? So the line that I just marked is the lower part of them. It's this part right here. So what I have here is I have the eye line and I have the beginning of the eyebrow line. So this is what I'm gonna do. First of all, I mean, this is, I like to do it actually earlier. I'm gonna put a mark in the center because it's easier for us if we, if we cut it in the center, it's easy for us to kind of mirror both sides. Our face, are not 100% symmetrical, but they are very symmetrical. The overall feel is pretty symmetrical. So that's what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to achieve a, 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 an acceptable symmetry. Okay, this is the beginning of our eyebrows. I'm just to put it in, just to kind of try to start to making it look like a person, I'm gonna put the eyebrows in. A little bit of a wing, a little bit of a wing. Not too angry. Okay, eyebrows, great. Now, our eyes 
are on that line that we already marked, the half mark from the top and bottom of the school. Um, they start right now. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do a very general shape, and then we're gonna maybe next class or maybe later today we're gonna get into more of the uh, uh, the uh, a more accurate shape. But right now, all I want you to do is do an almond shape. Almond shape, something that looks like that. Okay, we will refine that. That is not how what an eye looks like, but this is now just as a placeholder to just get the general feel of what we're doing right now. Okay, the distance between the eyes, and that is very important to remember, is equals to one eye. So if I choose my eye, if I select my eye to be around that, and the reason I selected it is because I'm looking at the distance from the side of the face. And if I take a, uh, if I take a ruler and I stand in front of a mirror, I can actually measure the distance between the outer corner of our eye and the side of our face. It could be equal to one eye. And because I have that line in the center of the face, it helps me just to mirror what I do on one side and to easily flip it to the other side, okay? I wanna make sure that the distance between my eyes, as I said, equals to one eye. If you make it smaller and if you make it larger, it's not bad. It just may not look like the person that you're trying to show or in general, it's rare to see distance that is much bigger or much smaller. It's unusual. So the usual distance would be equals to, uh, equals to one eye in length. Okay, so we place the eyes. Now, the second mark, which is the second third, is the base of the nose, of the nose. When I draw no noses, there are two measure, there's two, two points that I want to think about. One point is the base of the nose, the, where the nose meets the face, which is down here. And then there's the tip of the nose, which is a little bit higher. If you have long nose, the tip of the nose may be a little bit lower. If, you, if you're a baby and you have tiny nose, the tip of your nose would be higher. Um, but right now we are marking where the base of the nose is. And usually that area is slightly darker. But right now, all only thing we want to do is just mark it with one tiny line. That's it. That line, how wide is that line? You can ask yourself that question. You can answer your own question. How, how wide it is, you could take a ruler. And this is something that I do, um, I do kind of in my head. I, 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 you know, I do it in real life, of course, but I also. When I, when I draw someone or something, I, I always have like an imaginary lines going up and down from there to there, constantly measuring and comparing. So for example, one thing that I would do is I would take a, a line from the corner, the inner corner of my eye, and I would have it, you know, straight down. And then I would ask myself, does it touch the side of my nose? And it kind of does on both sides. So I know that the width of my nose on the bottom here is kind of gonna fall under, you know, right between the, the eyes, okay? I'm gonna leave it at that and I'm gonna move down to the uh, mouth. Now the mouth, if we take the last third, and by the way, if anyone has a question, feel free to, to, to uh, uh, ask me now. Someone wants to, uh, before we go, uh, yes, uh, Margo, you could just unmute yourself and, and let me know at the question. Can you repeat what you just said about the, um, the nose, the, no, um, you know, the bottom of the nose, you said? Yes. So um, about the, about the, with a straight line, with the lines. Margo? It's not working. You make the line and you said it's a little darker under the nose. Oh, okay. So, for, for, you know, I forget about the darkness now because that just, that takes me to, I'm thinking about shadows, which is down the road. Forget about that for now. And all I want you to do right now, the, the, the focus now is the diagram of the face. So that was just a comment that we'll talk about later, which is about shadows and light. So we're not, not worry about it now. For now, only thing I want you to do is to mark that line. 
it's an imaginary line. It doesn't, in our face, there are no lines, but we're just marking the placement of the nose, which is what we're trying to do. We're trying to be accurate with our drawing. We're trying to make the width of it correct in proportion to the face that we're drawing. So one way for me to know that my, the proportions are correct is to draw imaginary straight line from the corner of my eye down to see, so it will give me the, the most accurate width of the nose. Some people have narrow nose, some people have wider nose. So you for yourself, you wanna see how wide this is. So all I have right now is really just a marking. Later, we're gonna draw nose, noses and we're gonna learn how to, how to convey the unique shape that comes out of our faces here. But for this stage, just mark it, just mark a line there. Anyone has any other comment for now? Or question or anything that I was not clear? All right, so I will continue. I will continue uh, to the bottom third of our face. So the bottom third of our face, we can divide it to two. And if we divide it, divide it to two, then we have a line around here. That line would be where our lips are sitting on. It's that line is not our actual lips. It's where it's the bottom of the lips. And again, this is something that will be different for person to person. I'm kind of doing a generic face, looking at my own face a little bit as a reference. So you can tweak it according to what you see in a mirror and according to what you like. But for this specific diagram, let's try to stick it to as, as generic as possible. So let's do it like that. So again, I took the bottom third, I divided it by two, and then the, the top half is where the lips are sitting. And I'm just gonna mark the center of the lips and maybe a little bit of shape. Okay. And this is your face diagram, really. This is the, just the, the, the markings. Wow, those eyebrows are terrible. <laughs> I know they're so scared. <laughs> I'm gonna just soften them, I'm afraid of them. <laughs> um, this is just the placement of the face of the facial features. And now I can take this and make it better and make it more accurate. So I would do a few things. First of all, well, let's get, oh, let me do add two more things just to make it more real. One thing we can add hair. The moment you add hair, all of a sudden it looks much more, uh, look, makes much more sense. So let's say she, her hair is pulled back in a ponytail and the ears, and you can even look at your own face or you look, you can look at me, you can see that the ears are seated in the middle third of the face. And you can even have an, uh, um, um, an imaginary straight line from your eye coming out to see that the top of the ear meets that. So the ear would be around here and it would end, the bottom of the ear ends with the, the base of the nose. Straight line from the base of the nose going out meeting the bottom of the ear. Okay. All right, so. Okay, how many of you, and you could just show hand, want me to quickly go through these steps one more time, quickly. All right, I'm seeing a couple of hands, so I'm gonna just make a, a very quick review of that, okay? I'll keep it short, and then I will continue of how to make the eyes look like eyes and the lips and the nose and as much as we can get to today. All right, so another, um, um, just a, a quick demo, and I can even use that, because that uh, will show you how it looks at the very end. All right, so. Let's imagine her face, her, the skull is kind of, um, is cut off in this artwork. So let's imagine if we know that the eyes are the center of the skull. So I'm gonna take the same measurement 
and that would give me the top of the skull. Halfway from the top of the skull to the bottom of the skull, which is the chin, halfway point is where the eyes are sitting, okay? That's where the eyes are sitting. Oh, let's do a line in the center. The shape of the chin is much more complex than the shape of the uh, top of the skull, which is more rounded. And then the mass, the mass of the face, starting from around here, we're not seeing her hair, it's covered. But from around here, we're gonna measure down to the chin and we're gonna divide it by three. One, two, and three. Now, this is the eyebrow line. If we extend it, that's where the eyebrows are seated. They're gonna go up a little bit, a little bit, up a little bit maybe, but that's where they're seated. This is the base of the nose. This is also the bottom of the ears, which we're not seeing here. And then if we take from the bottom of the nose to the chin and we divide it by two, that's where the lips are sitting. The lips, the lips are closer to the nose than the chin. They're a little bit higher up. Does anyone want to lift their face diagram if they have a question and they feel like they got something wrong? You could do that and unmute yourself so I can see, so I can, D Donna, okay. We're gonna look at Donna's work. Uh, bring it a little bit closer. Let's see if I can, uh, okay, pin, okay. Um, all right, fantastic, great. Yes, you got all the measurements correct, amazing. Thank you, Donna, you did it. I did it, thank you. Anyone, anyone else want to uh, show the work? We have Cassie. C Cassie, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna see your work up close. Um, okay, okay, it's a little bit small, a little bit harder to see, but it looks correct. It looks correct. Yes, it looks correct. Okay. Um, Kat, Kelly's got hers up. Uh, Joel and um, and Abby's also raising her hand. Okay. Um, um, uh, 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 it's not Joel. What's it's M Marilyn, right? Do you want to unmute yourself? That adds to the last one. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Bring it closer. Bring it closer. Okay. Close to uh, you. Lift, it up, uh, lift it up a little bit. Okay. All right. Great beginning. Um, um, yes. Okay. You got a, you, you, you got the measurements correct. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, you me. have a question. Abby, if you had a question, you could go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to show and see if I got the measurements. Okay. Awesome. Yes. Uh, my only comment, two comments I have for you. Okay. Uh, um, the lips, notice that one side is a little bit bigger than the other side. Okay. Okay. Um, and um, just, just remember that the sides of the, the lines that we have from the eyes down to the side of the nose is more um, is more to help us, and and you and 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 later we those lines will not exist there. They're now they're just guidelines. So I just want to okay. And the um, it looks it's 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 looking good. It's gonna it's it's gonna help you in the next piece that we're gonna do. Great. And when you say that the halfway point of the skull is the eyes, is that the middle of the eyes? Um, it's a little bit different for person to person and very different artists show, um, different educators have different approaches of that. I actually, to me, it's, it's sometimes it, it starts low and then it ends, it, it, it starts below that line and ends on top of that line. Uh, but it's usually, it's usually the eyes are usually under it or right on top of it, but it's not. It's not a perfect measurement, so it's not like a, you know, you can you can move, shift it a little bit up or down. It's I, I cannot say it's the center of the eyes, but I could say that maybe the bottom of your eyes are sitting on it, or the side of your eyes are sitting on it. 
but it's different from person to person. So it's something that you have a little bit of, of playroom with this, a little bit of jiggle room. Okay, great, thank you. Um, any other question? Um, someone, I saw one, let's do one more person. Uh, there was one, someone uh, who's at Kelly. Kelly is showing her work. Um, yes, you got the measurements correct. Madeline, lift it up a little bit. Kelly, you got it good. Thank Madeline, you. Uh, no problem. Uh, bring it closer a little bit to the camera. You got the measurement correct. The only comment that I would say is to, on the next piece, this is more of a, of a diagram. So it's something kind of, uh, um, you know, not, not the final face, but just notice that your eyebrows, um, I'd like them to have a little bit more of a shape rather than straight. Okay. But that's I, something that you're gonna tweak as you work with individual faces, you're gonna start noticing the shapes of eyebrows. But it's more the, the sometimes, Sometimes you see hairs of eyebrows and the look of certain in a certain way, but then the bone, the eyebrow bone has still has that arch. And that bone is that allows us later to shade correctly because we're looking at that arch here and that's how we shade this area. But we'll get to that. Uh, Could I ask uh, you a question? Yes. Um, I didn't really understand about the ears, the placement of the ears. Could you just review that again? Sure. Um, okay, so the ears are at placed right at the center of our face, at the center third. Every person has different size ears and every person has different, you know, they could come up, out or back. When I was a kid, my father told me that <laughs> my father told me that I have Dumbo ears. It didn't end up being Dumbo ears, but I remember paying attention to those, you know, big ears. So when you look straight, the, the ears could pop out a lot or they could be flush against the skull. So it's different person to person, but the general rule is that, is that we're looking at the very top and the very bottom. Okay, because they start low and then they go up and they, they start, they end low, but then they go up again. You know, it's like the, the shape of the ear is very elaborate, but from the front, what you see is the top of the ear, which usually lines up with the outer corner of your eye with that very first line that we did. Okay, so that would be the top of the ear. And the bottom of the ear would line up with your uh, uh, bottom of the, with, with, a, with a third line, with a, the base of the nose here. Okay. So this is more or less. And the amount of how much they're showing is different for person for person, but you could just decide how you wanna, how you wanna show it. But yes, hold on, let me. Let me make this maybe a little bit more clear. All right, does that, does that work? Thank you, thank you. All right, awesome. Okay, so now let's make it look a little bit more real, okay? Because right now we had it's just kind of a diagram with straight lines and that's not how our faces actually look like. So let's take this reference right now and let's do an hour and I'm going to do a sketch based on these facial features, remembering our diagram, remembering our um, placement and our rules of placement and how it relates to this piece. Okay, so the first step again that I do for, for myself and all the things or most of the things that I tell you are my own individual take or my own process artistically. I strongly recommend that everything I say or do, you could either try or not, but you should always experiment with different techniques, especially techniques that are out of your comfort zone um, or, or topics that are out of your comfort zone and experiment because every time you try something that is not your usual thinking, it develops you. It makes you either you know, stick with what you like or find a whole different method of working. Um, I'm gonna show you, I'm, right now I'm gonna sketch this just with the way I work 
Um, it's not, you know, black and white rules. It's just the, the, my approach. Do, do you, you do you, okay? We're all artists here. We need to, we need to try to find our voice and, uh, and, and not just go with someone else's voice. But I'm gonna show you my voice right now and you hopefully you can, you know, take something from me today. All right, so I have this face right here looking straight at me. Everything is pretty clear. I can see, I can see the, the you know, the eyes sitting in the center. I can see the third, first third, second third, third third, and everything just sits nicely on it. There's different, there's slight different tweaks here because of this person has her own special beautiful face and not all faces look identical. And I'm gonna show you how those, uh, um, how those different characteristics just make everyone beautiful in their own way. But okay, so let me uh, first, let me transfer. I'm gonna use, um, I'm using charcoal vine right now, which is very, very loose, uh, very, very light charcoal. That means that I can um, easily erase it. It's just good for the demo. You, most of you, I'm assuming have a graphite pencil which is great. So when I start, oh, I'm using this just because it, it just helps me to just easily adjust it. Not ideal for an actual artwork. So just uh, on a side note. Okay, so when I work, I like to first get the general idea. Then at the beginning, first get the general, get the face. I don't have the top of her hair, of her face here, but I can just fake it. I can, I have the, the top of the forehead, so I can just, uh, so what I do, I just lightly mark the egg of the face, the general face. And one thing that is strongly recommend is that whenever you do art, any doesn't matter what kind of art that you do, always step back from it and look at it from few, you know, a few feet away. Because when we're looking at something up close like that, we're not seeing, we're not seeing everything. We're not seeing the issues, we're not seeing measurements, uh, correction. So stepping back from your work is very, it's so important. It's, it's probably the biggest, tip that I could give you if you just start is to step away from it. You'll see it much better when you step away from it. All right, so I lightly marked the egg. I marked the egg and I marked the, uh, the hairline, which is around here. We're not gonna really do hair today, but I'm just gonna mark the general feel of it. Okay, so I have my face. I know my eyes. Well, because I'm using the reference right next to me, because I'm using it like that, it's a very good way of working because it allows me to shift my head, to shift my gaze back and forth from here to here without having to like, you know, to move my eyes too much. And it just helps in kind of transferring this information to here as accurately as I can. So I recommend if, if you ever, when you work with, with reference photos, I recommend to place them next to your artwork, either, either in one line this way or this way, you know, this could be on the bottom or top, but not, you know, not in an angle on the side, just the way, I, I just one approach of, 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 of keeping it accurate. All right, so now because it is placed on the same line, I could actually extend the line. I could just take a ruler and just know that my, eye is, or my eyes are around here, right? Kind of helps me in, in placing them correctly. Now here, when I, put the, when I put the ruler on the eyes, it tells me it tells me that the inner corner is a little bit lower than the outer corner. And you can see that with your own eyes. You could see, you know, every eyes is different, but you wanna look and ask yourself, 
are the outer corner uh, sloping down a little bit or are they high up? But they're not gonna be, not they're not gonna be, but in many cases, they're not gonna sit on the same line. So I will remember that when I sketch my eyes later. But this is just the placement of the eyes, great. Now let's do the placement of the nose. I could either do that with a ruler or I could be, you know, I can trust my, my own diagram and know that, that I take the, the mask of the face from here to here and divide it by three. So I'm gonna do that lightly. So this would be the eyebrow line. This is one third, this is second third. The nose would be around here. And then the lips are a little bit lower here. Now, if I take her nose and I divide the, the, the space and I divide the measurement from the base of the nose to the chin by two, you could see that her lips are actually, they're not sitting on it, they're actually slightly lower. And she has very full lips, so that kind of affects the placement. If she had, like, if I have much thinner lips, my lips are closer to the nose. Her lips are lower, are slightly lower. This is an individual thing, but I will adjust my measurement to, you know, to work with that. So I'm not gonna place her lips over that half line. I'm gonna place them halfway as the way we see it right now. And I'm gonna step back. And I'm gonna see that I place them too high. So I will erase them and I will lower them. This is the chin line here. This is the bottom of the lips. This is here. This is one lip. And you can have a, a center line to help you. Uh, and you could draw it very, very lightly if you want, but I, I feel like the way I work is I have sort of an imaginary lines and I constantly look at those imaginary lines. Like I constantly have straight lines going here and here because for example, like if I take a line and I, and I have it and I, and I you know, draw it straight down, it will tell me, first of all, that her nose is a little bit wider than the space between her eyes. So that just helps me in, in accurately portraying its shape and not adjusting it according to, you know, whatever face diagram I had in general to make it more true to her. And also it shows me that it reaches, if I have the same imaginary line going down, it shows me that the mouth is also kind of ending not too far. Like her mouth is, not very wide. It's full this way, but it's not very wide this way. So I will por portray that as well. All right, so this is bottom of the leaf. This is the nose. All right, so now I'm now gonna, I'm gonna show one eye here. And I noticed that the, the corner, the outer corner of the eye is a little bit higher than the inner corner. And I will, and I will step, step away from it and see what I need to fix. I'm gonna show the eye enlarged separately. So don't worry about it right now, but it's drawing it perfectly. I just wanna be able to kind of show where it sits in the face. And this is, this, this mark here was the um, uh, eyebrow mark. This is where the eyebrows are starting here, but then they, as you can see, they go up a little bit, they arch up. And so I will try to, to capture that arch correctly. And she has thick eyebrows and I will show that thickness here. And here I did one half. And um, 
Yeah, I think it shows, I mean, of course we can work on it more, but it shows this person keeping in mind the measurements that we had in mind and adjusting them to make it work for us. Uh, for example, I needed to adjust the placement of the mouse. And I can still adjust it more. I can see now, you know, I'm looking at it from far. I'm like, you know what? I think the nose needs to be slightly higher. So I'm going to raise the nose a little bit, just a little bit. And I'm just marking, and I'm just marking the, the very, the very bottom of it. I don't show many times, or I, I, I see sometimes when people are trying to draw the, the nose and actually have a line. And I want you to, I want you to realize that we use lines because that's, it's, it's, it's easy to capture a certain shape if you just draw a line. But is it accurate? When you look at a face, is there an actual line here? There's no actual line here. It's, it's, it's a skin and bones are smooth curves starting from here up and down, you know, with, with all these nuanced nuance shape, but there's no, there's no line. There is kind of line when I look to the side and when you see the edge, when you see this line, then, then yes, there is a line. But from the front in, in you know, relaxed lighting and not harsh lighting where it's really dark from here, creating a sharp uh, shadow. If we're just looking at our face like that, there's no actual line. And you could see in, the, in my previous class I showed, okay, actually here. Um, you can see here in this artwork, Holbein's artwork, it's just so beautiful and so simple. And there's no lines here. There's the tiny, tiniest amount of shading on one side, but there's no line. He keeps the linear, the, the, use, the use of lines, he keeps it to the very, very minimum, just the bottom of the nose. And I, and I, and I do, I like that. That's, I, I, I feel like that's a, a, a good portrayal of the shape of the nose, which is just very complex um, and unique. Okay, I'm sure people have questions. It's a good time for questions while I drink some water. You can unmute yourself if you wanna show something or have a question. You might have a question that will help someone else, so don't be shy. All right, then I'm going to show you how to draw an eye. Because we're now zooming in onto the face that we just drew. We're zooming into here, actually zooming into a different eye, and we're gonna learn how to capture the unique curvature as well as the reflection quality we have in an eye. So all we did right now, we just talked about placement and marking and just general kind of outline, very lightly sketched, right? We didn't really bring it to a finished artwork level. We just kind of did a, um, an illustration, a quick illustration. Now I wanna spend a little bit more time and, and, do, and do something that has more um, um, of a finished artwork feel to it. So I'm going to put this, let's put this here. Uh, let's see, let's put this inside. And I'm gonna put this over. Uh, no, I'll do it in the page. Um, all right. Let me just take this up. So, you know, when I look at portraits, whenever you look at an artwork or at a person, to me, the first thing that I notice about them is their eyes. 
And I feel like people may be differently, but you know, you may look at the hair first, lips, I don't know, everyone has their own thing that they notice right away. But I first noticed the eyes. So I find myself, I find myself focusing on, on the eyes in my artwork many times and bringing it to, um, to, a, uh, to a finish level that is much more than other parts of the face. And you can see it, you know, you can see it in, in, you know, even in Holbein's work, you can see how little attention, or not attention, how little treatment he gave to the lips. Like he left, left the lips pretty minimal in their execution. And the eyes and the eyebrows especially are just, you know, just very realistic and very, very detailed. Um, so I like to do details in my eyes. I like to show them with details also because it's just a beautiful, a beautiful uh, visual. All right, so I'm going to take this eye. So before we said that we have, we have an eye line and then we're uh, on that eye line, we're putting the eyes. And you can see even here, let's pretend this eye is part of a huge portrait that sits here. We can just take the ruler and just put it on the, let's say, on the... Uh, inner corner of the eye. And you can see that the outer corner, I don't know if you could see, but the outer corner of the eye is a little bit higher. And also the eye itself, you know, curves down a little bit. So if I had a line here, the, the outer corner, let's say, let's put the outer corner on that line and the out, I'm sorry, the inner corner right on the line. And then the outer corner, which would be around here, Let's end it um, a little bit over that line. So I know that my eye goes, slightly goes up here, but it also comes down here. So this is what I'm gonna do first. Remember I said kind of an almond. So I'm gonna do a very, very light almond here. I'm gonna adjust that shape completely, but I just wanna put it down just to get it started. So this is, let's say I took an almond and I tilted it a little bit. And notice that I'm, these are not my final marks. These will be removed and changed completely. This is just to get the general feel of the eye. So this eye is an almond slightly tilted. Great. Now I'm going to look at every curve that I have. And as I said, our body, our face, skin, life is always rounded. It's always a little bit curvy. So I would keep my, my, and there are artists that use straight lines. I, I personally keep my linear lines as curvy as I can, or I try to pay attention because sometimes something looks straight, especially because we're working with, not with real life. We're working with an image that was processed. We're working with a photograph. And one comment I want to say on the side that is important for I feel it was important to me to realize, and that comment is, when we work with reference photographs, remember that we're looking at an image that was already processed by the camera lens. And the camera lens, the camera makes decisions. The camera makes the, the shadows darker and flatter. It makes the light very, very strong. It makes some adjustments to the reality. And then we take that process and we print it in our, you know, home printer, which isn't, which is even, in the, even not even that good of a printer. So we have a second process. So that is another thing that takes the image away from reality even further. So our job is, as, you know, as an artist, the way when I look at an image like that, I have to use my, my, critical sense and look at it and ask myself, is it really like that? Or was it slightly distorted and changed and, and tweaked by all the processes it went through? So again, the most ideal way would be to draw from life. Second would be to look in a mirror. A third would be to look at an image. And if you work with an image, just make sure it's a high resolution image where you could zoom in. Um, remember that if you take selfie, with your phone, if you take a selfie, that selfie will be distorted because of the angle. There will be slight distortion, you know, the face, you know, parts of the face look bigger or smaller, unlike real life. 
So you have to use your critical thinking when you look at any reference artwork that you work with and ask yourself how close it is to reality and what details from here do I want to eliminate or change? You know, you have that power as the artist to change, to change things that you do and to tweak them to make it work for you. Having said that, I will jump back to this beautiful almond that we have here. So this is just a general shape. Now let's take the general shape and tweak it. So this is what happens with, with the eye. We have the tear duct here. The tear duct creates a little bit of a triangle, like a beak of a, of a bird. And I'm gonna do harsh lines just so you can see them clearly, but then I'm gonna erase those lines at some places to make it look more like this, all right? So tear duct right down here, looks like a beak of a bird. And then let's start with the bottom, with the bottom um, eyelid. The bottom eyelid, it goes with kind of a, a slight curve down and then curves back up. Slight curve down. And notice this, there is, there's a bit of, it goes up here. Okay, not really up, but it's the slope here. The slope at every part is different. There, it's not one, you know, it's not one line. It's not like the almond shape that I did before. It's not. It's a bunch of little curves that are connecting to each other. All right, so that's the bottom eyelid. The, now we're gonna do the top eyelid. The top eyelid, I would like to divide it by three. So we have this one, two, and three. Three parts. This part, you know, could go inwards just a tiny little bit. This is kind of a nice curve, and this is maybe slightly straighter curve. You can, in general, I find it helpful to break lines up. If you break lines up, it's a little bit more easy to understand it and to replicate it. So I look at this line, and I, in my head, I just, I, I kind of break it down to three and ask myself, okay, what does the first third look like? Let's just separate it from the artwork. Forget about it that it's an eye that nothing. I just see a gate here and I wanna draw the same gate. So I look at this from this point to this point and I just try to do this area. If you separate those pieces for yourself, it's just gonna make it easier for yourself to achieve accuracy. Okay, this was the top eyelid, and now we're going to do the fold, this, this, the fold of the skin, um, which very individual from person to person. Right now I'm taking the, I'm using my vine sharp one, I'm just using it sideways, and that lets me kind of create linear, uh, interesting linear um, uh, um, a line, a linear treatment or linear, uh, <clears throat> let's, just, let's just call it a line. To do this line in a more interesting way. So this is the fold of the skin on the top. And now within, within, within our, our eye really is, uh, um, imagine that there is, Imagine that there is a marble, there's a shiny marble, and that's our eye. And on top of it, you know, I'm going to show uh, a little side view. I'm going to show a little side view of the eye. Just so you understand what, I'm, what I mean. So if I look at this, imagine that there is a, there is a, there is a marble, there's a shiny marble, and then there's the, the eye. Okay, so this is the eye from the side. Eyelashes, just so you get the, and then this here, there's a little, let's say this is our eye from the side, okay? The eyelids, the, the top lid and the bottom lid, they're like, they're protectors of the, 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 that sensitive, shiny object that is our, mar the marble of the eye. 
it protects it. It comes up and down, um, 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 but it's 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 flush against the eyeball, but it also protects it. So it kind of covers it, and there's sort of a step. There's a step away. There's a bit of a distance between the edge of the eyelids up and down because there's thickness to that skin. You know, there's skin and muscles there. There's some thickness here. And I wanna show that thickness. I can see that thickness when I look at the side from a profile, but how do I show that thickness from the front? So the way I approach it is, first of all, we have the details. Oops, excuse me, let me put this back up. So the bottom eyelid, we're seeing, we're seeing that step, right? We see that white part. That's the step away. That's the that that's this part. Oh, and also important thing, notice how the eyelashes they come out of that step. They don't come out in a in a place that's right by the eyes because then they will uh, irritate the eye. They're a little bit away from the eyes. That's where the eyelashes are. Um, so, um, so how am I, how am I showing that step, that thickness of the lids? So the bottom one is pretty easy because it's over, it's there. So it's really just about marking that step. So I'm going to mark that step lightly. Okay. I have a step. I want, it's like a ledge, like a ledge of a window here. The tear duct is a little bit, gets a little bit darker. And then the top part of the eyelids um, casts a shadow on the eye itself, on the eyeball itself. So you can see in the, in the, even in this black and white image, you can see the darkness that shows only under the upper lid. You don't see the darkness on the bottom so much because the bottom of the eye accepts more light. But the top of the eye, because there is the eyelid, because there's this part, it doesn't let the sun or the light hits at that part. So this whole area is usually a little bit darker. So I like to show that. I like to show that darkness. And I'm, I'm using charcoal, so I'm, um, um, it's kind of easily, I can use, easily smudge it. Right now, I don't want you to worry about blending too much. I'm just showing you now the, the idea of it. Next week, we go, next time, we're gonna work on shading and, and, all, and all those techniques. But right now, I want you more, to, I want you, the idea is to understand the, and understand the shape rather than shading techniques. It's just something that I, it's important to me to show at this stage as well. And then we have the iris and the iris, it in the center. It's a perfect, perfect sphere in the center of the eye, in the center in this particular case, because the eye is looking straight up. Obviously, it moves when you want to show something in your side look. Um, so I'm going to show that iris. And remember how we did our circle before? It's not easy to draw a perfect circle with, you know, with no guidelines. So if you practice, if you do a square and you just put a circle in it a few times, it will just help you draw a, a more perfect circle in here. And again, I always work very lightly. I work very lightly. I, I start with marks, just marks. And then as I work and I feel more confident about those marks, that's where I, you know, I maybe I darken it as needed. So I'm marking the iris here. And then I will take a step back because this is something that we all need to do. Always take a step back and to correct ourselves. So taking a step back showed me that I lowered this too much here. So I will fix that. This is a little bit too low. I'm gonna raise it up just a bit to be more accurate. 
but okay, so my iris is good. And then the pupil is, imagine, essentially imagine a donut, okay? It's like you have a donut here. This is the donut hole. What you wanna do is you wanna keep that center, the donut hole, you wanna keep it right in the center. You don't want that black circle, this, to be higher or lower. It needs to be right in the center of the iris. I mean, if she's, you know, if I'm looking up on that, it's gonna to move together. But this in, in relationship needs to remain the center of the iris in order to look accurate and not completely creepy, which when you draw eyes, you will draw some creepy stuff. Now, the next part, is to draw the color of the iris and or the pattern of the iris. And if you take a very good look at yourself in a mirror and you come up close, maybe at a certain light, a good lighting or outdoor, you're gonna notice, you're gonna notice that there is a pattern on the iris. And that pattern reminds me of um, a bike wheel or a ray of sun. So the way I portray it personally, and everyone can portray that pattern in their own way, but I just like to do that. I just do kind of like rays of sun. Rays of sun coming all around. Now, I don't think about the what's, where it's darker and where it's lighter yet. I'm just gonna cover everything with that pattern. Okay, now I'm going to tweak it to make it work for me. So I'm going to darken. Remember I said that it's dark under the top lid. It's the same thing. Also, the same rule applies to the iris as well. So also in the iris itself, the upper part of it, this part, this part would be darker than the lower part. And that is true for every color eyes, for most lighting conditions. Um, and of course, you always want to check yourself and verify if you work with something with different reference, of course, but this is just a general standard uh, look that I'm familiar with. Um, and as I work, I remember that my, I remember that my, um, uh, my eyelid has thickness and that it comes out that it's not flush against the eyeball. And I remember that. And I need, it's something that if you remember, if you have that knowledge, this anatomical knowledge, it will show in your work. If you don't have anatomical knowledge and you try to portray, you know, a movement of a body or a facial expression, it's, it's more, it's, it's just very challenging. So using, you know, using existing, using knowledge that you have, or just, ob not knowledge, I'm sorry, just observation of your own face, it would help you, it help you in drawing other people's faces as well, because you're gonna notice, oh, that's different. Their nose is different, their eyes different. Does anyone have a question at this stage for us? Okay. If you do, oh, yes, yes. Okay, you said that the pupil, right, that little round part is halfway between, but it, it, it looks like it was further up in the eye. Did I hear you right? Where, does, where is the pupil? The, the pupil, it, the center of the iris. Okay. When, when, you move, when you move your eyes up and down, let's say you look up and your iris looks up, then your pupil will move along with it. Okay. You know, but it will remain, it will remain in the center of the iris. But if the okay. iris, and here, you can see that here, this is a, a Leonardo da Vinci piece. You can see that here, the pupil is, is the center of the iris. Even though it's, it's moved a little bit, you can still see that it's the center part of the iris and that it creates like a donut shape. Okay, because it's the other part is under the lid. Right? The, the, the one the, you just showed us of, of, of Da Vinci. 
the other correct the other the, the upper part of the iris is hidden by the upper lid correct yes. okay got it yes. thank yes. you i'll unmute myself here um abby says uh no questions but your eye looks so much better than mine <laughs> well well, Abby, I've been, you know, I've been sketching for many, 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 many years, and I can promise you that my first, you know, few years of eyes will look horrendous. And that's, and to me, art, to me, creating art and sketching and getting better at, you know, drawing people and capturing, you know, capturing light and, and expression, it all, it comes with, you know, it comes with just doing it every day over and over and over. And, and, I feel like to me, I mean, people have different ideas about being, you know, talented artists, what it is, but to me, a very, very big part of it is just the discipline and the practice. And if you have discipline, if you practice, and if you sketch every day for five, 10 minutes, even doesn't need to be a whole hour, a little bit every day, and you, and you challenge yourself to sketch things that you're not, you know, comfortable with, or you're not, you know, not available to you, like do something different, you will just get better every day. You will get better. That's the only way for. That's the only way to be great at what you do is just to do it every day. But I know you all heard it so many times and you know it already. But it's just a reminder that you'll get better every day that you sketch. I, I've been doing this for a long time, so it gives me some sort some kind of. So it's easy for me, but um, and it will be for you too when you continue doing it. All right, so I'm gonna just uh, continue just working on this eye. Uh, I am going to darken the corner of the eye here, which I know is a little bit dark because it is a uh, shadow from the shadow from the um, uh, the upper lid casts over the white of the eye, the white part of the marble of the eye. And I'm going to do something that I do with everything. I, it's 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 um, find the edges and lose edges. Keep keep you know I keep I, I use my eraser not as oh my god I made a mistake. No, it's my white pencil. That's what I use it. So I I I in one hand I'm holding my dark, one hand I'm holding my white, and I'm just going back and forth between those two things. And I'm just gonna, all I do is flicker my eyes back, back and forth from here to here, from here to here. And of course, I don't do it often enough, I will take a step back and I will look at it from far away and I will look at all the issues and what needs to be fixed and what needs to be lighter and what needs to be darker and what needs to change. Like, for example, I see that that corner here is way too dark. I don't need it to be that dark. By the way, I'm using my finger to, to smudge it. It's not ideal. Don't use your fingers. It leaves the oily residue. I'm just doing it here. Just pretend that I'm not doing it. It's just very easy. But it's not, um, when you do a final artwork, you do not want to use your finger. So one, another thing that I noticed about the iris is that not only it has like a ray of, of sun pattern, also it has a, um, um, a ring around it, a, a, a slightly darker ring around. Everyone doesn't matter how what kind what color eyes you as you always have a bit of a a darker ring around. And the way I like to do that ring is not by drawing a ring, but by doing this many 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 tiny lines that together create a feel of dark uh, ring and also go with the pattern of the eye that I tried to show before and it doesn't go against it. So that's what I like to do. I like to fill it up. And I'll step back and I can see that this needs to be a little bit lighter. And um, okay, and I got the reflective part pretty good. Um, you could always, um, um, if you use kneaded erasers, I don't know how many of you got kneaded eraser. Um, I like using it because you could shape it to, first of all, you can, you can erase, it, it's, very, it's a very useful eraser. You can shape it to, to, shape it to whatever 
shape works for you. And for example, there's this dot here of reflection. If I make sure the area, let me darken the area one second. Let me darken this area. And I just want to remind you that I'm using for this demo, I'm using a charcoal, which is slightly different than the graphite that you have. I'm using it just because it helps me get a, 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 a quick demo, um, but you can achieve the same stuff with, with graphite, but just a little bit more, it's just a little bit less immediate, but it's much more, it stays on the paper. This, if I go like this, the whole thing will be half erased. Graphite will not be half erased. So it's, it's good to use graphite for that reason. Um, but yeah, so I can, I just shake it a little bit and I reveal that little thing here. And all right, I'll leave this at that. And I'm gonna give a little bit more attention to our, to the surrounding area um, of the eyes. So I wanna talk about, let's see how long do we have? So we we have just under 10 minutes. Under 10 minutes, yeah. okay. Um, if anyone has a question, it would be a good time to, um, to, to, to ask that question. So Margo wants to know what kind of pencils should we buy? I know you said graphite, but is there a brand or a, a thickness or I don't know? Um, so any, gra any graphite paper, any graphite pencil or stick would do. I like to use softer graphite. A softer graphite would be 4B, 6B, here this is 6B. Um, I use graphite pencil, this is woodless. I think I, the one that I recommended was wood, this is woodless. So that means that when I sharpen it and I hold it like that on the side, it lets me do this. So that's how you can get uh, quick coverage easily. So this is woodless graphite pencil. If you don't have that and you have just a plain regular pencil, you could still do a great artwork with it. It's not, you know, it's not all about the materials, but it is, you know, you, you, do, you, you do experiment with things and you, you feel more comfortable with one thing over the other. So there's pencil and there's also a stick, which comes in a, it comes in a, you know, like a compressed stick. And you ask about brand, any, you know, if you go to Bleak Arts, any brand will do uh, from Bleak Art. I do not recommend using kids art supplies. They're, you know, by nature, just lower, you know, student quality. But if you go to Bleak and you buy any of their pencils, you know, nothing would, everything would work for you there. So- and, and what um, about the eraser? You mentioned that the eraser. So what, can you just go over that again? Yes, sure. So um, I use, I use, um, let me, I'll, I'll show you my, my most useful stuff. Okay, so I used, as I, I was demoing with uh, charcoal, but let's forget about charcoal because that's just for, that, that was just for the demo. In general, for the process here, for our work here, any pencil will do. Graphite pencil, if you use softer graphite, which means the number next to the B would be like, higher 6B, 6B is softer than 2B. So the softer the pencil, the easier it is for you to smudge it and to blend it. So for example, this is a 6B and I can smudge it and just get a very you know, solid surface. If you use harder pencil, for example, 2H or 4H, those are uh, uh, um, less, uh, uh, they're good for details, not for coverage. So my recommendation, my recommendation would be a soft pencil. My other thing that I recommend that I use a lot, I didn't use it a lot today, but I will be using a lot for the next two uh, sessions. And that's what, and I use that in general, is a piece of artist chamois. It's a piece of fabric that you buy for like $5 from Bleak Art Store. It's a, it's a fabric that is kind of suede, uh, not kind of, I think it's, it's actually suede, very thin suede. And it's just good for, for, for blending. Um, if you don't have that, you could just try a paper towel. You could try a brush, a soft brush. You could try yeah. soft makeup brush. You can try Q-tips. Anything but your fingers. Your fingers, <laughs> as I 
you know, it's not that I don't, as you can see, I can't help it and I use it sometimes, but it's not, you know, it's, you, you don't want oil on your artwork and you, we have, you know, we can't help it. So I, anything that moves the pigment on your paper could be interesting. There's no, you know, there's, there's, there's a million ways. I use foam. I have different types of foams and uh, different types of brushes and everything and, and different, even different fabrics because they, they accept them, the material differently and they apply differently. So anything that helps you shift the paper, shift the pigment on the paper and also get nice edges is interesting. So you can experiment with anything, uh, but yeah, but this is something that I use a lot. And as far as erasers, this is regular eraser. It's like a white, it used to be white. It's just dirty, but it's just a white regular you know, eraser that's very, very, very useful. And kneaded eraser, it comes, it looks like light blue when you buy it. And the difference is that it's very soft and it's moldable and you can constantly, you can clean it like that. The way you, when you just, when after you use it, you could just kind of twist it around a couple of times and it sort of cleans itself. Um, I don't know how, I don't have an explanation for that. And one day I was like, I gotta Google that. I have yet to do that but somehow it cleans itself. What and is it? Again? A kneaded eraser. Kneaded like, like kneading dough with a K. Kneaded Thank eraser. And, and, and it's also good because you could, you could shape it. So if you want to do little dots, you could just you know, use that as opposed to the white uh, eraser that is, you know, you're limited to its shape, which by the way, I sometimes take exacto knife and I cut the eraser to whatever shape I need it to be. You know, you could be creative with whatever art supplies you have at home to make it work for you. Um, I guess my my the, the the thing that I would suggest to spend money on is when you do a final artwork and not just a study or just a sketch to learn something. When you do an artwork that you're hoping you know to frame. Um, I would recommend using paper that is artist quality, that is not, um, you know, not printer paper or kids paper, because artist paper has, um, has um, um, acidity level in it, or it, it's made so it doesn't go yellow and crumble in 50 years. So it remains white and remains and, and keeps, and also the artwork will not fade from it. So that's something. So I would recommend spending a little bit of money on, 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 on good paper. And you could buy just a sketch pad, you know. Again, bleak to me is, is whatever I buy there, even if it's inexpensive, I know that it's artist quality. Um, so I, I, you know, just, just going there and just, you know, one of the, to me, an amazing art lesson is just to walk into art store, it doesn't need to be bleak, any art store and just, browse the thing just read what it says on the labels of pencils and sketch pads because just reading that would help you you will learn from that you know like i take a sketch pad and it says on it you know good for you know charcoal pastel ink and i'm like mm, you know let me try pastel and ink together you know it's just gives you gives you more understanding of the tools that you use um yeah but for our for our classes, I, I, to, to me, those classes, it's more about kind of the learning, more about the, the, the process. And then after you're done with the classes, then you could focus on creating something that is, you know, your masterpiece forever. Uh, but during the class, treat it more as, as, you know, as notes, as just learning um, sessions. It would make you less stressed. Like I find it very stressful, you know, when you try to create a masterpiece and everybody's talking. <laughs> All right, any other questions? Mm -hmm. All right, so let me, I just want to finish. Okay, and we're, we're, we have one more minute. Philip, with your permission, I'm just going to finish the comment about eyelashes, okay? Absolutely, yeah. So the one thing I want you to know about lashes, a few things about eyelashes, is the pattern of eyelashes is it comes, um, let, me, let me do it. All right, let me show it here. They, they, they come from, they come from the base. They come from the base of the eyelids. They don't touch your eyeballs. Okay. They come from the base of the eyelids and they come down a little bit and then they go up. Okay. Down and then up, down and then up. So when we look at them from the front, 
remember that because they come down a little bit, you can sometimes see that, and not all eye, eyelashes are like that, you can sometimes see that they, it kind of gets dark. You can see that they, they, they dip down a little bit and then they go up. And when they go up, they don't go up like that. They go up like this, they feather. They be, when you zoom in at the very, very, very end of the eyelash, it looks like that, not like that. It looks like a, a, like a, 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 a dot, a tiny, it disappears really. So I press, when I do eyelashes, the top eyelashes, which you see more than the bottom eyelashes, I press down and then I pull. I press and I just pull out like this. And the eyelashes don't go all in that one direction. They go out like a fan, you know, like that. And they're curved. They're not straight lines. They're just beautiful arches like that. And with that, with that, we will conclude our session. <laughs> I hope um, you're very welcome. I hope uh, you gain info from this and I will see you uh, on our next visit. Yeah, so I just want to mention to everyone that um, if you, I hope, I, first of all, I would like to say to Hodea, this has been fantastic. It exceeded my expectations as a host. So thank you so much. It was so thoughtful, so creative, and so intelligent. So thank you so much. Um, I'm sure everyone agrees. Um, please do register individually for the classes. So I put the links in here. But Hodea has also um, agreed to send the recording to you. So tomorrow I'll send the recording to you, or maybe later tonight, because I'm actually working till seven. It depends on how long Zoom takes to process it. But I will send you the recording and also the links to class two and class three so you can register for those. So um, any final thoughts or you're good to go? Oh, I think uh, that's it. And I think everyone, whatever you did today, uh, my only recommendation would be to try to do it again tomorrow. See if and do the face diagram one more time and try to find a face and just draw it because all those information that you got today, it will be kind of embedded in you if you bring it to life, if you try. So that's my only comment. Thank you. Thanks. Everybody. What a gift. Uh, what a gift. Thank you. We will see Fantastic. you. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. Thank Bye you. everybody. See you on the 19th. Thanks. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye.